74 cube LS with our alien and our new anteater NA snout. What's the trick about the new NA snout? No longer, you know, we never had that for the naturally aspirated motors. Is it's got a five-inch oval, so you get some nice airflow into that engine, especially with the power levels that these are making. You can see right there. Of course, all cut from a billet. You can just see the sexiness of this. And I think this package really looks sexy. At any rate, this is it's in all aluminum, it's 470 cubes, and it's uh it's basically 700 horsepower. And it is pump gas and it's a streeter. So we're running through some just some regular 69 chassis speed tech headers. It's got the all pro uh, six bolt cylinder heads, so it has the additional clamping force of the extra two uh, head bolts per cylinder. Uh, we're running on a tall deck RHS block. Uh, we have the full build specialties drive unit, which the power steering is not on because we don't run that on the dyno, but AC, high amp alternator, power steering. It's really a clean setup. I mean, even on the dyno, it looks clean, and on the dyno, things usually don't look clean, you know? Also a dry sump engine, kind of a neat pan we've got from this company, uh, Speed Tech or ATS. It's a uh, dry sump pan. It's really high quality. It's the first time we used it. It's a real high quality pan. Uh, you know, really nicely TIG welded, but it'll fit the early chassis, so it'll fit a hot rod chassis and still run the uh, the dry sump there. and then of course our this is our full wire harness right here so that controls the whole motor you can disconnect that and our easy hookup if you look here this is really pretty much what you're hooking up is power switch to ignition and grounds we're using the factory crank trigger on coil packs so you can mount those behind the firewall so you don't have to see the coils and you know some interesting things here we've got our stainless linkage and we made a nice little bracket to hold the stainless linkage it's all on the inside so you don't really see it when you're up here you know so that is kind of a was always kind of a pet peeve of mine is to see normally you'd have a TPS sensor on this side and then you'd have throttle linkage on this side so we actually have a throttle body here a throttle body here and then the linkage is on the inside where you can't see it gives it a nice clean and slick look of course, with that new anteater, it'll plumb down into cold air on the bottom of the car. All right, so here is one of the dyno poles. Uh, it was raining, um, so the numbers are a little off here. Uh, but at any rate, 686 horsepower, 6,400, 612 foot-pounds. But when you start looking at the torque at like... 
511 pounds at 3,800, and then 535, 557, 589, 600, 612, 612, 610, 608, 590, 551. I mean, it just hangs that fatty fat torque. Look at that right there, that little stab of 551 to 511. It's just it just hangs torque, you know, for a long time. You know, three, this is a 3,000 RPM power band that's just stout, you know. Almost 500 at the start. So it's a pretty cool little motor on a good day. The last one made 708, I think, or whatever. But uh, at any rate, uh, very nice. And that's a sweet little package. You know, 400 pound engine, 700 horsepower, naturally aspirated, and when you hear this thing, you'll know it's coming. chunks of metal carved on a CNC machine massive hours if you actually look close you can see the actual colouring of the of the machine you can see how all the passes the machine had to do there